Okay, so here's the thing. Last Friday, I was perusing the internet, as one often does, when something just popped into my recommended page completely out of the blue. It was a trailer for a movie called The Girl with the Pearl Earring. Now, obviously, it was a nod to the famous Girl with the Pearl Earring painting, but what intrigued me the most was the fact that Scarlett Johansson was playing the part of The Girl with the Pearl Earring, and she looked exactly like the model in the original. Like, the resemblance was uncanny. Annie. Why this threw me for a lot of a loop, we'll never know. All I can say is that the thought of recreating that painting just popped into my head at that moment, and now we're here. So this madness began in the early hours of Saturday morning. I grabbed a 20 by 24 inch canvas and got to sketching the proportions. And before you ask, yes, I still do use a ruler and a calculator to get the ratios and proportions correct. It's a lot like using a tractor to garden, if that makes sense. But I like it that way, so I'm not gonna change it. Also, worth mentioning, I would use a grid for this part, but that scares me a lot, so I'm not going to. Anyways, after two naps, three dance parties and several attacks of frustration, I was finished sketching it out. It was already 11.36 a.m. and I had a lot of work to get done, so I sat down immediately and got to painting. Now, the great thing about this painting is that a good 60% of it is just black. So I started by painting the entire background the darkest shade of acrylic black paint I had. It was like a void staring back at me, engulfing me, eating me up, a black abyss with God knows what lurking at the bottom. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. I finished the black background in about 20 minutes and painted the edges of the painting in another 10 minutes. Now you might be thinking, Joanna, you've literally done nothing so far, and you would be correct. However, in my mind, I was already exhausted. I blame it on the senioritis. You see, it's starting to affect aspects of my life outside of school. The government needs to get involved in this. So in my bout of procrastination, my mom and I went shopping. Yes. You heard that right. I tagged along with her and we went to the mall where several things happened, so let me fill you in. One, I bought a couple things and I would like to share them with you now. First, I went to Muji and I bought several pens. I got these pens because my other ones just decided to stop working last week, so that was really fun and fresh. I also got this pink highlighter because it's pink. Next, I went to Aritzia because, okay, Here's the thing. So when I go to the gym, I wear Nike Pro shorts and they are extremely tight and very uncomfortable and they give me camel toe. So I conducted an investigation online and I found these booty shorts on the Aritzia website. And no, I will not be trying these on because I don't want YouTube to demonetize my fat butt. And finally, I went to the white girl hellhole that is Brandy Melville. Now usually I don't buy things from Brandy Melville because they aren't the most ethical of brands, but my mother and I passed in front of Brandy Melville and this skirt caught my mother's eye immediately and she screamed at me to buy it. I had no other option. Is it cute? Sure. But as I've said before, if I can't wear it during the apocalypse, I'm not going to put it on my body. Something else that happened while we were shopping was that my mom and I decided to go and try on sunglasses for shizzles and giggles. We tried on many sunnies of different shapes, colors, sizes, races, creeds, and religion, but it didn't matter because no matter what, I will always come back to the same pair. And finally, I was walking through the mall when I encountered this sandal just chilling. What intrigued me, however, was that it was just the one shoe. Where was its sibling? This reminded me of something I saw when I was very little, and I was never able to forget. I swear to you on my life that what I'm about to tell you legitimately happened, even though my mother refuses to admit it. So when I was little, my parents and I went to Canadian Tire. We got out of the car and were walking to the entrance when I noticed this guy walking in just ahead of us. He wore a burgundy bucket hat, a red t-shirt, black shorts, and flip-flops. Now, as he's going through the doors, he seems to lose one of his flip-flops. Like, just leave it and keep walking. And it's just the one. How do you do that? He didn't come back for that shoe. I doubt he even noticed that one of his foots was shoeless. Now, this memory has plagued me ever since I was little, and my mom tries to convince me that it was just a figment of my imagination, but I refuse to admit that. Just like I refuse to admit that there is in fact a monster beneath my bed. My dudes, this preamble has finally come to an end. Things are about to get really scary really quickly. I just wanna make sure that before we begin, 
everybody has their seat belts on and knows where the emergency exits are. I've already set out my paints. I'm going to start on the face now. Wish me luck. Let's begin this madness. And thus I started painting. First up, the eyes. This was easy enough. Her eyes are actually quite blisteringly white, so there wasn't much shading in this part. Same goes for the skin around her eyes. The girl needs to sit in the sun for a fat one. She's rivaling Edward Cullen in the sickly pale category. Good evening, my dudes. So it is now 10.30. I've just awoken from a quick 30 minute nap because I was falling asleep at my post. I finished painting the eyes and I have to admit, they're looking pretty good. Usually it's at this point that things start to go haywire. So I'm surprised that it's actually holding up. The sun, you may be wondering, has officially said goodbye. It is completely and utterly dark outside. So we've commenced the long haul into the darkness of the night. I'm sorry I'm using really big words to construct my sentences. It's just that when I'm slightly delirious, I start pulling out the synonyms, you know? I'm just a walking thesaurus. Just wait, when I'm really sleep deprived, I'll start talking in iambic pentameter, but that's a video for another time. <laughs> Anyways, let's keep going. I kept on going. It was time to start her nose. Something I noticed with this painting is that her face seems to just emerge from the darkness like a beacon of light. And actually, there is a name for that. It's called Charoscuro. I read that on Wikipedia and I felt like quite the painter, so I'm sorry I had to flex on you. I have to admit that the nose is where things went kind of haywire because I was struggling to match the colors in the original painting, but I mean, in the end, it looked like a nose, it sniffed like a nose, and it walked like a nose, so I think I somewhat succeeded. Hello, my dudes. Just another update. So it's 1.45 in the morning now, and I've finished the nose. I've been listening to Careless Whisper for the past, like, 20 minutes. And I don't know if it's just because it's 1.45 in the morning or because I'm so sleep deprived, but I'm hearing notes that I didn't know existed. It's an otherworldly experience to say the least. Anyways, I've ranted enough. I'm gonna get back to painting now. Next up, I painted the lips. One of the most difficult parts for me was trying to emulate the softness of the original painting, if that makes sense. There aren't that many harsh lines if you look closely, and everything seems to flow from one color to the next color. I mean, I would use Jaclyn Hill's new lipsticks to do the lips, but I don't want to get mold on my painting. The only other thing of interest that happened during this part was that sometime at around 2 a.m., Billie Jean came on and I dropped everything and had the world's quietest dance party so as to not wake up my parents. Now, if you tell me that this is unnecessary, I will pop off on you. You have lost your mind. This is absolutely necessary. It's literally Newton's fourth law, and you can't make that up. Anyways, as soon as that song was over, I was back to painting. I could not afford another procrastination attack. I started on the rest of her face. I was really trying to not make it patchy like I did when I attempted to paint the Mona Lisa, and I think for the most part, it wasn't that bad. I also have to admit that this was when her left eye really started to look wonky. I don't know if it's her alarmingly white skin or maybe my poor shading, but it started looking really lost. Sided. My dudes, we have finished painting the face. Not gonna lie, she's looking pretty flat, so I'm gonna have to figure something out with that. But regardless, I'm gonna take a break now, aka I'm gonna nap for a fat one. And then I'm probably gonna go to the gym because, okay, here's the thing. Sometime at around 4 a.m., the big, fat, ugly monster in my stomach decided to rear its ugly head and it caused me to eat several avocados. So let's just say I have to burn a couple calories. So that's probably what I'm gonna do at around 7 or 8 a.m. The sun is starting to come up. I read somewhere that last night it was supposed to be a full moon, but Taylor Lautner did not come running shirtless into my house at any time, so I think they might have been a little bit wrong on that one. But anyways, I'm gonna take a nap now because things are getting blurry, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Fast forward a good two hours. The time was 7.30 a.m. I had just awoken from my power nap and I was staying true to my claims of going to the gym. Those avocados were not going to burn themselves so I got ready to go to the gym myself because neither of my parents were awake. This was quite daunting since I am an only child who was barely allowed to use public transit through fear of kidnapping. But I survived, I completed my gym shenanigans and was back home before you could say smoked turkey boobs. Good morning my dudes. It is now 9.30. I'm eating breakfast. I'm back from the gym. I'm a new woman, you know. The rest of the painting is probably going to go by pretty quickly because I find that fabric doesn't take that long for me, but I don't know. It might just be because I'm not that good. So there is one thing I want to discuss with you guys and it's this. 
let me explain. So I went to Loblaws the other day and they did not have tortillas anymore. What? I feel like I'm violating every law in the American Constitution. There's so much wrong with this. I feel violated. My insides feel violated. This avocado feels violated. It deserved better. But unfortunately, this is what I'm stuck with for this week until Loblaws figures itself out and gets more tortillas. Anyways, that got pretty heated. My dudes, here we have entered the home stretch. The hardest part of the painting was over and it was time that I begin her clothes. First up, her blue turban. At first it was kind of looking poopy, but then I blended it all together in a panicked state, which usually doesn't work, but for some reason it worked this time. Next, that earring. I don't really know how people make things shiny. It really baffles me when I see paintings of metal and it looks like I'm looking at a mirror, but I just placed the colors where I saw them and it ended up looking kind of shiny, so I'm happy with that too. Her blouse, shirt, whatever you want to call it. It was a disgusting shade of mustard, but I plugged my nose and got to painting. Now, painting fabric always goes one of two ways for me. It's either a pain in the butt or it cures the anxiety I don't have. And unfortunately, in this case, it was the former. I didn't put in this footage, but it actually took me six hours to finish all of the fabric on this painting. Why? Because I kept on taking breaks every three minutes. If you think about it, it's kind of like going into labor. The episodes of procrastination get stronger and stronger and closer together until you're done with the painting. Anyways, so now we're here. I've finished this monstrosity, so let's talk. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised by how it turned out. This is only my third oil painting portrait, and I think I can definitely see some improvement from the first one I've done. Now, I did end up retouching the forehead and the eyes because to me, it seemed like she was looking a bit one-dimensional. Other than that, however, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, but I'm even more happy that this is over with and I'm not gonna do this again. But with that, my dear, Dudes, I think I'm gonna end this video now. Thank you for coming along with me. I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me whenever it is that you're watching this. I love you so much, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good night.